Hello, elephants. Lovely herd. Now, the elephants really like these areas. So you'll see the trees up ahead, and that's where that stream I was talking about that flows from f final control ends, basically. And then the water spreads out through this grassland and seeps down towards the Samaki Marsh. And of course, at the top end where the water first hits, there's also a lot of silt that's washed down from the escarpment. So very rich in nutrients, so very good soils. So the grass here is spectacular. And you often get the elephants congregating on these areas where these um, streams spill out into the grassland. Jean is wondering, what is the rainfall like in the dry season in the Mara? Well, it's, 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 it's wetter than the wet season at Juma. Let's just uh, put it that way. So it's a seriously big group of Ellie's here. Lovely, there's a big bull there. Wonderful. Now, elephants taking advantage now that the wildebeest have uh, left. Uh, I'm chatting to Jamie, who's on the other side. So there's still quite a lot of wildebeest around the Sand River. Hey, guys. Getting that lovely, nutritious green grass. And there's a big bull coming through to the right there. A little bit there, you look at them, you can see the massive size difference between a male and female elephant. Nice set of ivory on him. Probably around 35, 40 years old. So very much in his prime. I'm just going to move up ahead to where the elephants are moving towards and then we'll sit there for a while and maybe even just take a moment to just enjoy this incredible experience of a massive herd of elephants walking past you. a bit of waving as we get to the spot I want to be in. To, be in. How are you, sir? Jumbo. Jumbo, how Ah, safi, safi. Kabisa sana. Toalini, bai doki dogo. Ah, vichwe moja, but... I'm not Safi, Kare in a laga, a pachini sana. Hi, guys. Yes, we're live right now. Can you believe it? So there's people watching behind us. Yes. Well, well, thank you. Well, there we go. Um, so don't forget if you're going to be home at the end of the month 29th. 29th? Exactly. And every day, six hours a day on YouTube, you can find us. Yes, yeah, they're, they're, well, they're around somewhere out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so our camp's actually on top of the hill over there, so that's where we stay. Well, lovely to meet you guys as well. My name is Brent, yes, the one who's always covered in shukas. Yeah. It is, it gets really cold when you sleep out there all night. <laughs> So here we go, guys. We're meeting some Safari Live fans. So we are live currently at the moment um, on YouTube, and uh, people are asking us questions on hashtag Safari Live. So when you get home, be sure to watch us again. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Thanks very much, Mum. Well, that's really nice to hear. It's lovely to meet you guys. I'm going to take everyone else on a game drive and go pop over there. Exactly. Cheers, guys. Santa's there. Bye. Oh, sorry about that, everyone, but 
You know, the fans call. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to get... It was a l very... There he is. There's the cute baby Ellie I was looking for. Tiny little guy. So it seems like Tristan's broke his car, Taylor's fighting gremlins, so you're stuck with Batman and I. There we go, there's a tiny little one amongst the legs there that I wanted to show you. Now Louis is wondering what is the maximum size of an elephant? size for a very big male um, is probably around six tons. The largest body size of an elephant ever recorded um, was nine tons. So 9,000 kilograms of an elephant bull from southern Angola. So that is the largest. The, generally the largest... Oh, that's what's going on behind us. There's some talking. The largest... Um, uh, the, the tallest, sorry, not the largest, not the heaviest, um, but uh, on average, not always, but uh, often the tallest uh, elephants are considered to be from South Africa um, and from particular from the coastal plain, um, uh, from the Tembe Elephant Reserve, and uh, some of them can reach close to five meters at the shoulder, so very, very big. So there we go. So I wanted to show you that baby, but the rest of the herd looks like it's about to head straight towards us. And it's, as I said, it's a lovely big herd. There we go. Hello, guys. Christy's wondering, do elephants sneeze? Um, indeed, they do. I have seen an elephant sneeze on occasion. Uh, not quite what we'd expect. Um, it doesn't really sound like a sneeze, but instead do sort of expel irritants from inside their trunk. I said I should be moving slowly towards us, and uh, I think this is probably the best seat in the house where we are at the moment. And hopefully they're going to sort of engulf us. It is a very special experience being surrounded by elephants. Now, of course, it can be a very scary experience um, if you get the situation wrong and you read the situation wrong. And, uh, but fortunately, I'm quite confident watching this elephant behavior that they are very relaxed. And I think we're in for a treat. Now, that was complaining elephant to elephant that had nothing to do with the vehicles or us. Um, it was an elephant complaining at an elephant. Now, there's a whole range of vocalizations that elephants use um, for different things. I mean, there's even sort of a weaning one. So when an elephant calf's being weaned, there's sort of a from a mom saying, no more milk. Um, there's distress. Uh, there's joy. There's play. Um, so they're absolutely fascinating animals and definitely one of the more complex wild animals in terms of social structure and their verbal communications. Snazzy is wondering, do elephants and giraffe get along? Uh, well, they don't not get along. And there's very little competition between them, and so they pretty much just ignore each other. Sometimes it's quite nice to just sit quietly and enjoy it. And um, it's a little one, and the little one sucking.
Such a peaceful evening. So Chris and Mallory from Texas are wondering, what is my most dangerous encounter uh, with elephants as a guide? Well, it actually wasn't while I was guiding. I've had a few close calls, but never guiding guests. Um, I've had some close calls running anti-poaching and then doing some consulting in the Gabonese rainforest. I was actually picked up and thrown into a tree by a female elephant in Gabon. Uh, it wasn't her fault though. She was being scared by a big helicopter and she got a fright and she ran towards and I had uh, some volunteers with me and I tried to got them out of the way and her charge by shouting at her picked me up and threw me into a tree and that's why I've got a gammy hip and uh, and then when she was coming down to sort of kneel on me I had my fishing rod with me in a cover and uh, probably one of the only people in the world and say a fishing rod saved my life and a fishing rod indeed saved my life so what happened is as she came down I hit her with the with the, the fishing rod in a in a PVC case, and the rattle of the rods is, is a noise that she was unused to, and, and it disturbed her. And she then ran away, uh, and then had a dislocated hip, and then had to use a stick to walk about six kilometres to the beach where a helicopter could pick me up and take me to uh, a doctor. That's my most in danger, uh, my most dangerous uh, situation with elephants, and it wasn't their fault; it was the the helicopter's fault. Uh, the first thing I did afterwards when I got back um, was immediately go walk, walk straight up to an elephant on foot to make sure I wasn't scared of them. Fortunately, I wasn't. Uh, Robin is wondering, what is the best way to deal with an angry elephant? Uh, Robin, it completely depends. Every situation um, is different. So uh, you, you have to read each individual situation. Sorry, I'm just putting my jersey on. It's getting a bit cold. <laughs> Um, each individual situation differently so there is no one right way there's multiple ways and and it can change depending on the day the circumstance where you are what stress the elephants under what stress you're under so it's very important not to make one set rule um, when it comes to those type of situations you must be able to do flexible but uh, the most important thing is always just stay calm now I'm trying to remember there is a there is a safari live story out there somewhere of um, how to deal with a naughty elephant. Um, and uh, I think uh, I, I generally give them a good talking to. They like listening to me. Well, they listen, tend to listen to me. If they misbehave, I chastise them, give them a, a wagging finger. One. Paul would like to know how far will an elephant travel to get to good grassland. Now, Paul, it, it completely depends, again, on the area. So elephants in more arid areas, like Savo, will, will travel bigger distances than elephants in the Mara. The elephants in the Mara tend to be quite residential and they, they, they stick around certain areas. It's only really when the wildebeest come in en masse that they'll move up towards the escarpment and into the forests. And that's more to avoid the absolute pandemonium that is caused by millions of wildebeest stamping around being absolute nanas. So it all it all depends as I say every situ every area is different. Um, elephants in Botswana can travel over a hundred kilometers uh, and that's not so much for grazing but for water. So again arid areas elephants will tend to move further so when the when the the rain pools dry out and in a place where you you don't get rain during the wet season I mean, during the dry season, they will then move on to the permanent water holes or permanent rivers. So, and sometimes that can be 100 kilometers. So uh, good examples of that is um, uh, Northern Botswana, the Luangwa Valley in Zambia, um, the Salu in, 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 in Tanzania, uh, and I'm sure Savo in Kenya, uh, and Samburu. So it, it, it all depends. Each area has got its whole own unique set of circumstances. And those circumstances can change from year to year.